Well, it's another fine Saturday morning. Been blessed with mostly sunny skies, fairly cool temperatures, and a lot of work to be done. So what we got to do today is finally start the airline running process, connecting the tanks to everything else they're supposed to be connected with. Uh, connecting point A and point B with C and D, the two tanks. You ever notice how many YouTube channels start up, tear into a project, and then just kind of fade away like a fart on a windy day? Well, I'll tell you why. One, it's a lot of work. Two, it's expensive. This little pile of parts here, $750. There are times when uh, I'm glad that my wife does not watch my channel very often. So if you're watching this, babe, just go ahead and plug your ears. This little pile of parts, we have one humongous air dryer. No idea where I'm gonna put that thing. We have one small box of airline fittings. And we have a little bit of air hose, 100 feet. So what I've done here is I went through all my old videos and photos and uh, I drew how these tanks were set up on the truck when I got it. You know, this being the front of the truck, this being the back, every line, hose, wherever it went, I uh, labeled what they were, what they did, uh, labeled everything that was just capped. So I'm going to start with this because I know it needs most of this to be a running machine and uh, there's currently nothing attached to these things. So I'm just gonna start one at a time. First step of this process is gonna be to get these fittings out of these blocks, four of them. Uh, and then I'm gonna take the blocks themselves out and I'm gonna take them in the shop and clean them up. Alrighty then, so I ran both of these guys um, through the media blaster, one for each side. And uh, there's been a lot of debate from what I've read about what you seal the threads with. Some say thread sealer only, some say Teflon tape. Heard a lot of guys using Teflon tape with thread sealer. So I figure more is better. Now this area right here is gonna get real busy real fast because I think this is where I'm gonna have to put the air dryer. So that's gonna be fun. But this is my crossover that goes to the other tank, as well as um, goes up and goes from my wet tank to the primary, I guess you'd call it, tank. Well, about to run my uh, first airline after I screw this little fella in here. My ding-dong neighbor's playing his music, so hopefully I don't get busted by the copyright Nazis. Okay, this little fella comes off. And this little fella threads up onto the hose. And this little fella threads up onto that. And this guy rams down in there. And then this little fella goes like this. This is the only style I could find that was a good deal. So, that's what I'm using. All right, give me my length here figured out. Cut it just a little long. It's got the springy thingy. All right. Okay, so we need to clock this thing around, twist it so that when it twists when we're tightening it, Get it all bound up. Make sure that it's still seated. Okay, give it a final snuggie snug here in a second. Alright, so this little fella comes from the front of my wet tank, which is the front half of this one into primary tank. Give myself plenty of slack. Chop it here.
hard part is keeping this hose from spinning while you're tightening this. Twist it as much as I can this way. Hold it. And then tighten it. Hopefully, keeping it from wadding up like a pretzel. All right, now this little fella, it's gonna run all the way down around, cross over the top here with this guy, in the frame rail, or down under the frame rail, and it goes all the way up here. We'll go in with these bundles, all the way up to this guy right here. So we're gonna run new stuff from this fitting all the way back. I'll have to pop all these guys out. Eventually I'm gonna replace every single one of these. They're all factory stuff, it goes down there. But uh, that'll take us a minute to get that done. All right, so it's the next day. Um, I've soaked both of these hose connections because they're factory, at least the hoses are. Penetrating oil, I've popped all these nuts loose. I have completely removed the clamp that was here and half unbolted the clamp there. So I've got hose strung out there on the ground. I'm gonna use an old electrician's trick to get it pulled back down here. Now this hose is gonna to go to the top of that tank there, but this is the factory one here that lays on the ground for a number of months now. This is the garbage that we pulled off. This stuff's nasty. See all the covering just flaked off of it. This is the old crossover tube. We replaced that guy yesterday. All right, so I gotta get these guys off and then we'll start threading off the first of the uh, airlines. Um, yesterday we broke uh, 3,000 subscribers on the channel. That's crazy to me that 3,000 people like my stuff enough that they, they want to watch it. So, appreciate y'all. Trying to constantly improve my uh, stuff, make it more watchable. Trying to eliminate a lot of the skippable content, primarily, at first anyways. You know what I'm talking about, stuff that's so boring you're like, eh, whatever. <laughs> okay, so airline in question is this fat guy right here. Let me get the wrench. I soaked these uh, for a while out here after I got them to bust loose. No any unnecessary struggles. Okay. All right. That's out of the way. I suppose the next thing we can do is see if we can get this out. I can tell you right now, um, that will not clear this, so, huh, what do I want to do? So I think the best way to get these two fittings out, and eventually these back two as well, um, is probably just going to be to go up above and pop the nuts off this valve and drop it down. going to be super easy, because I have no carpet in here. I'm going to have to have my TIG welder buddy weld some new metal in aluminum but anyways you pull this pedal off kind of grease everything there's a pin over here kind of feels like baling wire pull that out the pedal will come up and uh, I believe it's these nuts here we'll drop that thing down may not have to take it out but we'll drop it down it'll uh, be a good time to clean these pins up lube everything up and there's a roller wheel under here that does not roll so we'll pull that off and clean it too so it needs to be done anyways all right, so I'm gonna try my best not to knock you guys over. While at the same time, get this thing apart. So, um, you'll be interested to see what we're using for a uh, cotter pin here. And this pin on this pedal tip it does not inspire confidence. Ah. Yes, paper clip, why not? Next question is, will pin come out? Probably not without some looby dooby. Plug your ears.
Yes, this is a hammer, I know. Might be some keyboard, keyboard warrior. I want to point out that I'm using a ratchet for a hammer. So yes, I am. And no, I don't care what you think about that. All right. Let's see if we can work this pin. All right, sweet. That's that roller pin. That thing is stuck. That needs to roll. So we'll run this through the blaster anyways. Get cleaned up, get that lubed up. Welcome back. That was a good song back in the day. All right. Cole Stud decided to come with this one. All right, don't matter. As long as it comes out. So the best technique to use when using a penetrating oil is uh, bust it free, like just the initial bust. Like don't try to thread it out. Just break it where the threads will kind of break. Then soak it penetrating oil and walk away for a little bit. Probably get my arm in your face. Okay, so on this guy, we're going to uh, just pull all the studs out. Now that this fella's dropped off here, we'll go ahead and pull these fittings off. I broke them free while uh, it was bolted to the floor. For this very reason, it'd be nearly impossible to get the stupid things off. If I hadn't broken them free first, you know what I mean? Never fails, the noisy stuff drives by right when I'm trying to talk. Alright. I'll have a bunch of fittings left over. So, a quick tech tip for you guys. Would you like to know what the main purpose for these high up cab over doors are for? Brain damage. You whack your head on in. Expecting it going a little further. Ow! These rocks on the knees are hard. Ow! More rocks on the knees. Okay, a little bit further. Right there. Let's roll. Let's roll like an egg roll. Hmm. Egg rolls don't actually sound bad right now. So a fella took the liberty of uh, popping these two lines here off of there. They need to be broke off anyways because they're going to get replaced. And I just barely have enough room to get in here and tighten these. So, I done it. Like it or not. Alright, get these out of the way. This would have been virtually impossible if this thing uh, bolted to the floor. Hopefully you're still in frame. See, we got plastic from here back. So it's just these four here that go to the back of the truck that are not uh, already plastic and or new rubber. These are probably fine for a while. They don't show any evidence of damage. So I got this guy kind of loosely bolted to the floor just so I can figure out my hose links. These guys are both in tight. Now my electrician's trick. I have my new hose taped into the old one. So I'm gonna get back here, try to drag that thing back through there, and at the same time, pull this one in. So we'll set you up, see how that goes.
All right, so I've got my uh, hose connected at that tank back there. I've got my hose run up here. And I've kind of popped this one line back on just so I can get a kind of a guesstimate on my length. Let's see. I want to kind of keep it where it was stock. And that one, this goes to the bottom one. So we're gonna call it there. I've still got some slack in the hose all the way back. I just don't wanna short myself. I'm just gonna leave these loose right now because I don't want to uh, run this down if I end up deciding to change that or if I just need to move it when I'm doing all these other lines. So we're just gonna get that up there just enough to grab it. All right, so progress has been made, obviously. That guy's in, kind of laid along the path it needs to be. Snaked up around, zip tied together with that one and run to there. So now what I need to do is replace this guy. Originally it stopped where the tanks used to be, but I have to run a new one from right here. So I have to put a different fitting on here and run it up to the valve up there, same place that one went. So I'm gonna put a new fitting in here, snake the line through there, just like you saw me do, and uh, bring you back in a few minutes when I get that done. So I got line number two pulled up here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, hop this dude on here. Then we'll pull the slack back out, go in the other direction, and attach it up there at the pedal. Would you believe I haven't scratched anything yet? Not doing the airlines, anyways. All right, well, I got that line to run all the way up here. Go ahead and pop this guy on here. Like I said, right now I'm just leaving these on here loose while I kind of wrap up some other odds and ends. Okay. Get it up there just far enough it don't fall off. Okay. So it's another day. Nice cool morning before work. It's supposed to rain at any time, but it's really cool out here, about 70 degrees. Tomorrow's supposed to be like 108, so we're gonna knock out this last line. This one's gonna go from either of those two fittings along the frame rail. It's the bigger of these two lines, that one right there. Back here. the valve there you can see right there I have tried and tried and tried to break that thing free but it will not so I'm gonna have to get in there and, and split that nut with a uh, Dremel tool so I can get that old line out of the way and get the fitting out holy cow what a pain this has been this thing's buried back here under the fifth wheel plate I had to split the nut and then it still took forever to break free. I'm gonna get down here and see if I can do the twisty do on this hose here and get it to unthread. This thing's been spliced back here a couple of times. I'm sure for the same reason that uh, I was fighting it this morning. Okay. Yeah, look at this fitting on the end of here. See, this had this tube section in it and then another second line going down to the tank. I just cut all the clamps. All these lines, probably everything related to the brake system is gonna get replaced as soon as I do the rear clip section. So I've got this guy broke free. Also not fun. Okay, this guy's gonna get replaced. It's got a small leak on it, but that'll wait till after I get the fifth wheel plate off. And all the lines going to it'll get replaced. Get my replacement here. Let's see if I can find the port again. 
Okay, right there. I'm kind of hiding underneath the stuff here. Let's see, come here, hose. See if I can do this without dropping it. We're getting dirt in it. Okay. Probably got my arms in your way, but I ain't nothing I can do about that at this moment. Make sure that's seated. How am I gonna hold that thing in there when I tighten it? And I got this nasty old fitting out. Got this new end with new 90 on it. And uh, now we're gonna put this uh, straight connector in it. Well, we certainly got a lot done here. Pretty proud of the accomplishments over the last few days. We've essentially wrapped up all of the uh, airlines, the big ones, from our air tanks. You know, got everything new all the way up to the brake pedal up there, to the back brakes. There's one or two small lines we still got to do, but we've got a lot done here. It really wasn't too terrible. The weather was probably the most terrible of all the bridges we had to cross still have to come up with some strappage stuff like that but really went pretty easy well that was a lot of fun work well some of it was anyways now for you guys who are still here i love you guys you're my core group and uh, i sure appreciate y'all uh, sticking around now i've got a funny story for you yesterday it was not a funny story but just so you guys don't get any ideas about me being some kind of an ace mechanic i am not so, a good buddy of mine owns a company that uh, uh, cleans up parking lots with these sweepers, and he's got this F-150, a 97 model, little V8 truck, and about eight months ago, I put a fuel pump in it. He calls me the other night. His guys run in the middle of the night. Um, they called him one o'clock in the morning. Truck's dead on the side of the road, so he gets up at one o'clock in the morning with a truck and trailer, goes out, spends two or three hours in the middle of the night, gets home at four o'clock in the morning with the F-150 on a trailer and had to drag back the other trailer. Big fiasco. So he calls me and says, hey, this thing is uh, dead, uh, acting like it ran out of gas. Got a new, brand new fuel pump, remember. Uh, driver's got gas in it, um, has close to a full tank of gas. So I spend, uh, I don't know, six hours or so between driving up there, hooking it up, the trailer to my truck, dragging it back here, unloading it, troubleshooting it, um, fooling with it, fighting with it. Finally, my diagnosis was weak fuel pump. Um, I get the thing in here in the shop, pop the bed up off of it, which is my preferred method for uh, changing fuel pumps on a truck. This truck has had a messed up gauge cluster for some time. It's got 300 plus thousand miles on it. And uh, depending on what you're doing, the gas gauge read full, it'll read empty. Long story short, after six hours of fighting, truck had three ounces of gas in it. 